This week on Carly's Couch, we discuss abandonment issues and emotional permanence, how they show up in your life, and things that you can do to make a difference. Welcome to Carly's Couch. Thanks for joining us today for another very special episode. You know, it is. Today is a special day. Every day is a special day. I don't want to be that person and be like, you know, another day above ground. But I was not feeling good yesterday, so I'm happy to be feeling better today. So, you know, today is a good day. Good. Um, so let us know, um, if there's any other topics that you guys want to hear us talk about, feel free to always send questions and things of that nature. We're happy to consider those when we do our episodes. And sometimes the episode can just be based on, um, a a particular topic, a question to us, whatever it may be. But if it inspires some conversation, then we're sure to talk about it as well. So feel free to send those our way. And those have been some of my favorite episodes are the more conversational based, like question ones, like not us going down a list or like teaching things, but actually, you know, we're all here working through life together. So sometimes it's cool to go through some of those scenarios that, you know, either we've been through or maybe we haven't and, you know, just giving new ways to look at them. Mm -hmm. And so today's topic is something that I would say that everybody uh, deals with or has to some extent. Um, It might be inevitable. Maybe that's something we can uh, argue in the episode. But abandonment issues, I think something that um, if you follow particular conversations, if you're into psychology, therapy, conversations around um, psychology and therapy, you're going to tend to hear something about Um, abandonment and those issues I think in a lot of conversations around relationships we hear about abandonment issues and how some of the issues that we may have in different spaces are stemming from that this fear of abandonment and so this week we're going to spend a little time discussing this topic Mm -hmm. I think like when I hear um, like abandonment issues, like I feel like right now it's like one of those buzzwords. Like it's like people hear it like toxic or, you know, whatever. And so you hear it a lot. But to your point, I do think a lot of people go through it. I wouldn't say everybody, but um, a lot of people probably do in different ways. So what is, what is abandonment issues when you hear that term? What do you think about? Um, I think about something that happened like when you were younger or even when you were older or something like that but basically um there was an event that happened that shaped the way that you think or have a narrative about your life and then you have that lens and you're looking at the rest of your life in it and a lot of times it's like when needs weren't met or when someone did leave you or someone broke up with you or you know whatever and so you feel like you get scared and you have this fear and you start living your life in a way as to assuage the fear that somebody's going to leave you Okay, and you don't think that's something that everybody deals with per se? No, but also it's like hard for me to be like hard yes and hard no on things. I just, maybe not Mm. everybody. Okay, Um, do abandonment issues show up in your life? Oh, but do they? Um, But I've been spending a lot of time working through them, and so I was really excited to talk through the topic because now that I'm, I wouldn't say on the other side because it still very much, I think, affects, you know, my mental and something I have to, like, reel in sometimes. But now that I've, like, learned and grown through a lot of them, I, I notice a lot of my choices and things that I did and made and all that went through when I was younger were, was because of emotion, like um, emotional abandonment and abandonment issues. Okay. So uh, what are some of those ways that it shows up for you? Um, so, uh, I'll give like some concrete examples, which I like. So, um, in relationships and it could be friendships, but more, more aptly in romantic relationships, like something very small could happen. Um, like a little disagreement over dishes or over where we're going to eat food or something. But my brain automatically goes to like, oh my God. And now everything is not okay. He's going to leave. Like something is wrong. I have to fix it. It's like, it's like a hypersensitivity. Um, we talked about people being like hypervigilant whenever you've had trauma and stuff in your life. And so that's one of the most acute ways I've noticed abandonment issues in my own life is like when little things happen and my reaction to them is like, a million times what an appropriately like a level or range of reaction would happen. So like a little disagreement all of a sudden doesn't matter how close we were or how strong our relationship is or how much someone loves me. They're going to leave me like it's over. Like I I fucked up. It's done. It's it's it. That's it. So in your examples, you in that moment, you literally process it like, Oh, they're going to leave me. My, my uh, nervous system gets dysregulated. And then I start like kind of freaking out about it. 
And um, I have very much had that reaction before to like a very small thing. Mm -hmm. And a past partner was like, are you okay? This is before I really knew what was going on or even like had that awareness in my body. Um, now it will just be like, let's say me and my partner had a disagreement. They leave. And then now I'm like, oh my God, he's never going to talk to me again. And I'm like, that is so irrational. But that is literally like one of the first places that my mind goes. Hmm. Okay. Um, when I think about abandonment issues, I, I think about what comes to mind is how people keep their guard up um, to keep themselves separated from other people um, because of what it is, which is what you said, the, it's a fear of people leaving you. And so I think more about it in terms of, you know, how people act and the things they say. And what is that really saying about like how they're trying to guard themselves, um, from disappointment or guard themselves from, um, building connections, um, with other people. And which is, I guess, reflected in some of the examples that I would have for myself, are more around recognizing certain behavior of like shutting down or not being expressive or not communicating, mm -hmm. um, which at the end of the day is still like, well, you don't want to bring a thing up. You can do it something yourself. Um, you can pretend like it's nothing's not a problem. Something's not a problem. Things of that nature, because you don't, you don't want to be an issue because, and then, you know, it all, it stems down. Right. But there's different, there's different answers you can have that then eventually lead to, Oh, because then they will go away. But very rarely will I ever like, as soon as something's happening or when, when maybe you're going through it, I'm not thinking like, Oh, this person's going to leave me. Like, I don't want to say this because they're going to leave me or I don't, um, or, oh my gosh, they're doing this and they're going to leave me. I don't, I don't go directly to that. But through a series of other steps, that's what it gets to, I guess. I, maybe I think more about like how somebody's going to feel about me, how they're going to think about me, um, which again goes down to like, okay, they're going to go. Um, but that's why I think it's surprising to, to immediately really think like, oh, they're going to leave. Because I think a lot of times it's, it's other things in between that that you're really thinking about in the moment. Um, but it still reflects a, a fear of abandonment. Yeah. And to be clear, I'm not dramatic. Like, I definitely have thought that in the past. But to your point, it's a lot more too. like, oh, man, where does this leave our relationship? And like, not thinking he's going to leave it. Oh, man, now I have to fix something like things can't be not OK. Like it like there's no margin of error. Like if I'm not showing up in a certain way, somebody might not, you know, perceive me in something or and they'll withdraw love like that. It's always this thing that can can go away. Mm -hmm. And I think interestingly enough, because we've talked about attachment styles, is I never quite connected um, abandonment issues with attachment style. Although, of course, in the, you know, having the conversation around it makes complete sense. But essentially, um, your attachment style is a reflection of the abandonment issues that you have. Hmm. And, and so if you are, we know those already, those are anxious attachment if you're somebody who's like a people pleaser and you're hyper vigilant to somebody's face and you want to do things and work your way through it and oh my gosh where is he going and and you're just a little bit more having more anxiety a little more codependent most likely um the other one is anxious or i mean excuse me i just said that avoidant mm -hmm. attachment that's where um you are withdrawn you're nonchalant because you do not want to create connections that will then break later. Um, and then there's a disorganized or um, the mixed style of both of those. Um, but I, when I saw that, I was like, oh, that makes perfect sense because that's essentially your attachment style is how you play out your way of keeping your guard up. So regardless, at the end of the day, like, um, you know, we are people, people need people and um, we want to have our community around us, whether you're talking about uh, the group of kids at school, your family, a relationship, et cetera. Um, relationships are important. And so in all of those, you still have a particular style. So if you are um, like a people pleaser or you're like, oh, I have to fix this. Oh, he might think this. He might think that you're being anxious um, in your attachment. That still reflects like your abandonment issue that oh, no, you're being over-responsible because you don't want somebody to leave in the same way that the other styles do too. It's just about how we reflect it and how we 
how we show them in our lives and our relationships. And so I don't know if, if back to what I was asking earlier, if like everybody has abandonment issues, but we do all have an attachment style, um, which is reflected on, upon like how our, us being afraid of people leaving our lives. Yeah, about how we form attachments in general and how you nurture those. Um, I think it's really interesting. I think also not to oversimplify those, that more people are probably, you know, you're not just solely one of them. You probably have tendencies of other ones too. But if you haven't, we did a whole episode on emotional attachment styles. I don't know the number, but if you search Carly's Couch and attachment styles, um, it'll pop up if you want to learn yours and learn more about yourself. And I think it's really helpful, um, as with anything in life, like taking time to, you know, note, Um, certain patterns in your life, like if, you know, you are people pleasing and what that looks like in your relationship, if you are building walls and not letting people get close to you and just kind of noticing what patterns are showing up in your life. And in this case, like thinking about um, the next things we're going to talk about is ways that abandonment issues can show up in your life. Cause it might be different for different people. Just like Lexi and I were talking about ours are very different. It sounds like, but all stemming from the similar thing. Yeah. I, I would say they all, um, it's all it's all stemming from this um and you are acting on it in your way but i think most people are anxious or avoidant when it comes to your attachment style i mean that or secure um as opposed to mix um like i i definitely lean very heavily more one way i think most people probably um would especially when you're looking at romantic relationships um but one of the signs is being overly eager to please. So if you're a people pleaser, um, if you're that person who, when somebody says, um, mm, <clears throat> I'm kind of thirsty, and you're like, oh, I'll go get you some water. Like, and you're like always doing things and the one hopping up. If you're the one at the cookout with your friends and, you know, you're still sitting there cleaning and wiping up the table when everybody's talking and having a good time, stuff like that. Um, those can be signs of abandonment, your abandonment issues because of why. You don't want people to leave. Well, I mean, obviously, but I'm saying like, like within doing that, what are you doing? You're showing I'm valuable. Yeah, yeah you're I'm trying helpful. to, you're trying to control. I can help take care of things yeah. like you're, uh, that's, I think the people pleasing um, stuff is like when a person needs to prove that they're valuable and perhaps they maybe have um, issues or conversations with themselves about like not being worthy or, um, you know, uh, needing to like do things for other people to, well, why would you like me? I haven't done anything. You need to do stuff. Um, So I think it kind of stems from those types of feelings. I think so too. And that's not to like shit on people who are natural givers, but I would, I would argue that a lot of times if you find that yourself in that category that you are like overly giving and learning how to have boundaries on that, like you can be the person who is happy to help and all of that, but most of the time it's too much and you're not considering yourself. So just thinking about your life and maybe how that plays out, it's cool to be a giver. Um, it's not cool to give until you're empty and still be trying to give and noticing the why. So going back to the root of like, you know, why do I do those things? If you've never sat with why you do a lot of the things that you do. Why do I shut down? Why don't I let people in? Why don't I do this? I think it's a good exercise to kind of sit with. Like, what are you scared of or what are you trying to gain from these actions? Mm -hmm. Another sign of abandonment issues in your life is jealousy in relationships. Um, I think that that, like, speaks for itself. But being um, overly insecure or jealous, um, and I think that that kind of – goes into like control issues like a little bit um if you feel like you can't control the situation then you feel less safe and then so people start to try to control things and people yeah um and also when it comes to like jealousy and relationships that is you kind of uh simplifying like the things that you're seeing and the stories and the context and all of that um because it, in a lot of cases, you are also self-sabotaging and trying to um, prove to yourself that this person is going to leave or that something's going to happen. Um, so to also connect that with trust, if you have a lot of, tr- sorry, if you have a lot of trust issues as well, um, and trusting um, a partner or a friend or, you know, somebody who's close to you and what they say, it's because like you're expecting and already living excuse me, in a state that you expect them to leave and that for them to go. And so you're almost um, operating from a place of 
um, just trying to prove that to be true. And I think that that's something that you can pay attention to and recognize in your actions and your thought processes when you do see something. Like if you're walking with your partner um, and you see somebody walk by, like sometimes like you'll get mad about something happening that has not even happened. Mm -hmm. um, so paying attention to that, like how how your thoughts uh, spike and your mood kind of spikes, goes down, up and down based off of things that you're perceiving in relation to a partner. Yeah. And I think um, I was like reading an article or listening to something a while ago with um, Nicole. Is it Nicole LaPera or whatever the lady LaPera? She's like a, um, a relationship psychologist. And she was like, you know, a little bit of jealousy is like regular. Like sometimes we're human and things affect us. But again, noticing those patterns and how that plays out in your life. Um, another sign of abandonment issues in your life is difficulty being emotionally intimate. So like not letting people in for fear that they might leave or hurt you or doing that. So kind of having walls up. And I put on the other side of that, like, I think anytime it's an extreme is a good time to take note because also if you're like overly intimate and you have no boundaries, that's like the people pleasing, over informing, trying to tell them this. Cause if they know all the things, then maybe, you know, we'll have a better relationship and they won't leave and whatever. So anytime you're on the extremes of one or the other. Mm -hmm. And then also in terms of relationships, if you tend to stay in relationships, even when you're battling internally about like, uh, I don't, this isn't what I want to deal with and or um, there are troubling things going on in the relationship and yet you feel like you can't leave whether that is because like um, like you think oh you can make it work oh they'll change whatever it's really kind of like you're just afraid to let go afraid to move on um, again it's like it will supplement that fear that people leave you um, even when like this isn't even serving you and it's okay right part of relationships um, are are coming together and then separating where something is not serving you and really like a lot of these things are around um, as Carly mentioned like when there are these extremes right whether you keep to yourself or like are overdoing it it's about like what is fueling that and and quite frankly I think that's really the main key it's hard to you know go through the whole day and and analyze and assess and that would be draining to analyze and assess every single move you make um but if you could like really like put every action down on every thought and, and thing that you did down and note like if that was a a fear fueled move or not mm -hmm. like a lot of times that fear could stem back to this space of abandonment um and so it's like how really I, I think in, in all of this, we think about like, OK, abandonment is real. Like this has come because of um, reasons like the loss of of a friend or a family member. It comes from uh, from figurative loss of like different relationships. Um, and then, of course, some other like even more dramatic type things. But I think the real thing to consider is like how do, can we switch like our decision making from coming from a place of fear to a place of um, just coming from like confidence of, of what's best for you and what you need. Um, and that seems so hard. Like it seems, sounds like it makes sense and it's easy, but it also seems so hard. But like, why, why is that such a hard thing to do? Well, I think because a lot of us, I mean, a lot of this stuff, like most things in life stem from childhood. And so you've kind of been living your whole life like, um, the root of abandonment issues is like you're longing for deep connection or to be chosen. And so if you, if, if you don't see it in relationships, you might even see it at work. Like, are you the person who goes above and beyond and always does this at work? And you want your boss to give you accolades and to, you want to win the awards and be the person. And when you don't, you feel like you're not good enough. And a lot, and like, we've been living our whole lives like that. So to your question of like, why is it hard? It's because it's interwoven into the fabric of our lives. Um, sound like a fruit of the looms commercial. Mm -hmm. And, the sense of like, that's how you've been thinking for so long. And so sometimes it can be hard to break that. Like if you are, if you're always um, like, I have a friend right now who is going through a lot um, with her business and stuff. And she feels bad because she is always the friend who shows up for people, quote unquote. Like she's always the person who does everything, goes to all the parties and does all that. And she can't do that right now. And people are kind of giving her flack about it, but I'm like, you going through a lot right now. And so in the sense of like, choosing fear of like people judging you or you know being mad at you or whatever over your need to take care of yourself like that's a big sign that you're scared that people aren't going to like love you or withdraw their love or relationships aren't as important and so just 
long story longer that it's just hard because we've been living our whole lives like that. And I think a lot of times people build that up into their identity. Like a lot of these things, I'm the giver. I'm the one who always does this and always does this. And that's unsustainable. Yeah. What would it look like to not be led by abandonment issues? It would look like you taking like a pause um, that we so often speak about on here before you act and kind of evaluating that. So before you respond to the text message the way you normally would, before you agree to the project that you probably don't have time for, before you um, skip your workout to go help somebody move or before you do any of these things, like really just evaluating why you're making the decisions that you're making and seeing if they honor yourself. Mm. So it sounds like at the end of the day, we need to, because I think, I think you're right. Like for the most part, it's uh, not instinctive, but it has been ingrained and it's a, it's habitual. The way you move is habitual. These are the ways, you know, to solve issues and what is we're calling an issue um, or solve things um, based off of what you needed to do growing up, most likely. Mm-hmm. Um, or how to get through a thing that happened, most likely. And so I think that we can be so connected to that that we aren't connected to, like, ourselves. And we talk about that, too. That's kind of like a um, a main thread throughout a lot of the episodes is, okay, how do you know yourself or learn yourself enough to even know, like, what are you honoring, right? Like, it can be very hard to strip all those extra things away. Um, but I do think that that's helpful, right? Like, it'll probably always be something you have to practice. And to just to take a pause and to really um, be bold enough to be honest with yourself, because it is hard. Like, uh, I'm shoot, just this is like a simple thing, but like, it's still like an example of like, it's still hard. Um, last maybe last week, I don't know, some time ago, a few few days ago, um, my friend, we were meeting, who, what were we doing? Um, a few of us were meeting for dinner, and some one of my friends texted me and was like, hey, are you Ubering? Um, if, you're not, if you're not Ubering, can you pick me up? And I don't, just off being selfish in general, like, it's like, man, I don't pick nobody up. And it's like, you know, the car kind of whack a little bit sometimes. And it's like, I don't want to think about extra time. I don't want to have to, you know, just feel like for whatever reason, right? Like, at the end of the day, it was not that deep, right? That was just kind of me being selfish. My first thoughts, like, like man, it would be real easy just to be like, oh, I'm because com- that's the first thing you ask, like, oh, are you north? Like, am I even in the direction? So they're trying to be considerate. And what went through my head was like, man, I could be like, I'm coming from a different place or I'm already out. Like, I could just easily lie to not do the thing. But then, and this isn't even exactly on topic, but the thing is like, to be able to pause and be like, no, like, I've, I want to tell the truth because, like, why why would you feel some kind of mm-hmm. way about not honoring, like, what you really want to do and what you what you care about doing, right? Like, you can just say, um, you can say no, you can say no and why or whatever. And then at the end of it, I also, I was like, actually, Lex, like, it's not that deep because this is somebody who, like, um, you know, has given you gifts for your birthday. They would pick you up, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. Like, I can pick you up. So and my, what happened for me is I just went through, like, all right, like, you don't got to be, you know, rude and just do what you need to do. But the fact that even with stuff like that, that's so simple, it's still hard sometimes to say mm-hmm. no or just to clearly say, like, I don't want to do that, even if you don't. Um, and there are other things that might be easier. Like if somebody's just asking if you want to do something or go to something, you might can say no to that. Um, and I'm not saying it's hard to say no to anything. It's just that even with the simplest things, it's like why can't we just really, really honor exactly, exactly how we feel? Or why is it like we have to like really like, uh, like how do I answer this? Like, and it shouldn't be that deep. Um, so I think that to take that pause is the biggest thing that we can do. And just thinking about like, what to what to do next or like what what do you need um and then how to tactfully uh respond to somebody or reach out to somebody or do whatever it is that you need to do based off of like what actually makes sense for you um and that that does take some time sometimes you do gotta like let yourself think through a couple of layers of thoughts and then come to like all right what's the real thing here and that's so interesting because when we were Um, We had put this on our idea list to talk about abandonment. And then I've been seeing a bunch of self-abandonment things. And so to me, that kind of ties in like our 
abandonment issues manifest as self abandoning habits and behaviors and thoughts. Mm, so mm-hmm. even in the sense of like over giving, but also under giving, like you want connection, but you're blocking yourself off from it. You're abandoning yourself because you're scared. Mm-hmm. And so anytime that you pause, ask yourself, am I, am I honoring myself or am I abandoning myself? Like, and sometimes it is not that deep and in, but it might feel like that, like picking somebody up or, agreeing to those plans even though you don't really feel good or that you know you need rest or that you're you know kind of having an anxious or depressing day or whatever's going on but like really like adding that extra layer of thought to it Mm -hmm. yeah I think that does make a lot of sense because they're otherwise like man it's hard to change those habits once you have them um and around how how you do things like I I would always like to try to be like super helpful when I was at stuff too, like at people's houses and stuff. And now I find myself more so judging like the person who's like, like, why are you wiping tables down? Bro? Like, just sit down. Like, and then post of stuff always are like, like you can sit down, you can relax. And I think that there's a, there is a line between like being giving and being helpful because it's also like, I'm not about to step over some trash to like go sit down either, but there's a big difference between, um, you know picking something up as you go to sit down or you know y'all playing uno or you know you spill something and you wipe it up as opposed to um everybody's in the other room playing uno and now you're over here like wiping the tables down and sweeping and all of that like I just think that there's a fine line and you can be a good person a decent person without like doing too much and I think that's one of the biggest things I had to learn and unlearn in abandonment issues is like I was very self-abandoning to make sure everybody else in my life is good but it's like what's the point if I'm not good and I think that us living in a way that honors ourselves also like inspires and helps other people to stand stronger in their boundaries to kind of figure out what works for them and what doesn't so whenever you start challenging these norms of you know over giving and overdoing and all that um, then you kind of get to a place of more peace and comfort in spaces like and I feel like me working on all of this has really only helped my relationships get better and deeper because now I can be honest and vulnerable and more myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, so some of the reasons that we can have abandonment issues, we've already touched on for the most part, but it's like, there's different buckets, um, whether it comes from childhood or, um, it can be more recent, um, one of the bigger buckets is, um, was it emotional? Um, uh, uh, it could be emotional abandonment. So like if our um, mm-hmm. emotionally unmet needs is really what I think I'm trying to say. So when your needs have been unmet, um, growing up and that can of course mean a variety of things, um, to not feeling like you had a voice, um, as a child to, um, and being quite like quieted or toned down, mm-hmm. Um, needing to be perfect, which a lot of us have. So like, and then the thing is about uh, parenting is like, um, you know, it has to be super hard because it's like you want to, you want the best and you want to uh, try to push somebody to do their best. And even as a friend, this can be an issue with between people too. Mm -hmm. Like you want to push people to do their best, but then it's like, how much are you showing them, showing a person that they are not okay where they are and how can you how can you make not make accomplishments about who they are? That's very hard um, because it's like, all right, let, you know, let's study more. Let's not have an F here. Um, I, I know you can do better than that. And and also, you know, how are you not making somebody feel terrible? Like, I think that's extremely hard. So I, I feel like I kind of have an understanding of like how this could easily go left <laughs> um, because they don't have to go that left to go left. Like, um, you know, your parents can be upset about. Uh, one grade and that Mike and you know you also as a, as a young person don't process things in, in uh, as complete a way right and have not seen the world and all the things and so it's it's something that I think everybody probably has to unlearn you know at some point with all of these things um, and yet we can still know like your parents may have one of the best for you there are some parents who are terrible parents there are some parents who um, have better intentions and it's still you're just as messed up so I mean, that it's not, it's, you're not alone, A, in, in having these types of issues and, and being able to realize that they stem from, um, your parents. And also you have to learn to have grace around in, in some cases, there's some stuff that's outrageous, but, um, in a lot of cases, having that still having that grace around your parents and recognizing that they are human beings as well. Um, because I think in our minds, we do see them as like these perfect, like, 
um, heroes and people who just like they knew what they were doing and this and that. And like, quite frankly, they just didn't. And I think that that's so important. Um, like as a reminder that you might think like, oh, I have really supportive parents. They were always there. So there's no way I could have abandonment issues. But we grew up in a society that's so individual and accomplishment based that, yes, you can very much internalize that and not think you're good enough if you're not at the top of your class, if you're not doing X, Y, Z, if you're an immigrant and didn't end up being a doctor. And so your parents don't think your career is real. You know, like whatever. There's so many layers that we can internalize. But I think the biggest one is like, only now it seems we're able to have these conversations in safe and brave spaces and like really delve into these abandonment issues. And I think about that because like my mom felt abandoned by my grandma because my grandma wasn't a very open person. Like she wasn't very lovey. She wasn't very open. I think she was very avoidant, whereas my mom was very anxious attached. And so like she just didn't love her in the way that she felt she needed to be loved. So then my mom became like an overly giver, overly lovey person. But it's really because, you know, everybody had their own issues that they weren't processing. And so it just kind of becomes this self-perpetuating, like they talk mm-hmm. about generational trauma and it, it, it really just starts to lead into that. And it doesn't have to be really deep, but it also can be from things. Yeah, I can see how one can beget the other as well in the same way that many relationships, um, anxious and avoidant, come together because you're both feeling like this unmet need that will also never be met. But even with parenting, like I've, I can see how an anxious parents um, can have very avoidant and shut down kids or avoidant parents can can have kids that now they're doing their best to try to get close so they're being anxious. Um, and it's one of those cycles where until you again, until you like have other people in your life and, and, or then actually can process like the difference in all of those things. It's, it kind of is one of those things where it comes down on, like, hopefully we have more parents who are parenting in a way where you're learning to like, let people be. And we can do that and practice that in our own lives too, outside of being parents and having kids. Mm -hmm. Um, Because another um, thing that can fuel these abandonment issues or make them, um, more prominent is relationship issues. So, um, you know, and we hear this a zillion times as well, but outside of your parents, then it's like, okay, you have this person that you might be with. And now, you know, that's a person that's kind of like showing you what you're worth at that time or, um, being a mirror of yourself to you. And so, um, to have issues there to lose a relationship, fall apart for whatever happens there is also going to add to whatever those beliefs are about who you are um, and then can lead to you being more detached more attached whatever it is right and so similarly um, in our relationships it's very important to uh, learn about like that secure attachment and to see like okay well what does it mean to be in a more neutral space and the same way we're talking about parents like we can do that with each other and with our relationships is to practice letting people be like to view uh, people more wholly um, to to not try to be controlling like all of it right it's, and it is difficult there too it's just mm-hmm. as difficult um, and so these are very much like it's just like uh, different iterations of like the same type of situation of can, are you okay? Like being who you are without what that means in relationship to other people. Mm -hmm. Um, And that that's very hard. And yet that's what we continue in all of our different relationships with people to have to figure out and show for ourselves. Mm, Mic drop on that. And I think that that's so beautiful. And I think that that's why it's important to have these discussions, right? Because sometimes there's pushback, especially from like our parents' generation in the sense of like, well, I've made it this far. I don't want to start unearthing things. It's a lot or just an inability to be flexible and open-minded about things just because how it that's this is how it is. But like this can improve your relationship so much. And more importantly, your relationship with yourself. Like when you know who you are and you know what you want, you can really like create your life in a way where you are loved on and supported and have all the things that you need. And you don't have to overextend yourself to get them. Like you don't have to do all that thing, all those things you think you have to do for people to love you or accept you. And that might mean some people in your life fall off and that's fine too. Um, Those will be real easy to tell the moment you stop over giving and over loving. But that's why it's important to have these so that you can have more authentic and deep connections relationships are often um reflections of us and so they might not always feel good and it might feel difficult um like i'd be reminded so much of of my abandonment issues and trauma and stuff in general in relationships i'm like oh wow why did i react like that or 
where did that thought come from? Why would I even think that about this person or why am I doing this? And so um, just recognizing how this is part of the foundation of your life and can really affect every part. And outside of relationships, it can affect your career too. Like if you feel like you're getting stepped over for promotions or you the person who is either being cutthroat or being too to this or to that or freaking out on your clients or customers because X, Y, and Z, like it really starts to bear fruit in all the areas of your life. And when you're saying this and it, you're, you're talking about recognizing how abandonment issues yes. show up in your life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And like the fruit that they bear and like why you might be making those decisions mm -hmm. in the different spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for those reasons that you just said, which is like being authentic to yourself, having better relationships. Uh, I want to say you might've said one more thing as well. Like those are reasons why it's important to think like, Hmm, do I have abandonment issues? How do they show up? Like, I think that's like, what this episode is boiling down to is just like, well, let me think about that for me, because I also think it's very easy to think about that with the parent that you have an issue with or with the partner that you think is like they don't get it or they're doing whatever wrong. Um, and we don't think about how it shows up in ourselves and in that maybe you need to give people more slack. Maybe you need to, like, relax a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day, there is so much pain and people leaving your life whether that is physically um figuratively break up whatever there's so much pain in in relationships ending and things changing and yet there's so much more pain to like move out of fear and um it's really a thing you just kind of practice to see that you're it's almost like suffering versus like pain of like dang and then being able to accept that and move through it um which is important um so having abandonment issues and the fear of abandonment allowing that to play such a huge role in our lives our lives our lives is is very crippling um and until you recognize where that's playing a role then i think you won't recognize like where you're limiting yourself even if it's like where you're staying like it's it and it's so crazy, like how much easier it can be to be like, actually, maybe we need to break up or this isn't working or to move for make different decisions um, or to speak up about something about how you feel about something, what's not working and missing out on the opportunity for somebody to actually show you that those things can change. So that like either way, you're either missing out on the opportunity to move on to something better. You're missing opportunity for somebody else to show better um, and to actually learn more about you and your needs. You're missing the opportunity for you to even uh, have self-confidence in expressing your needs and, and doing the things that you know you need to do. And at the end of the day, it's, that's all better for you. It just sounds crazy, but like it is all better for you. Um, and so it's something I think that you don't really get into you practice and you actually start to see like, oh, this actually makes things better for me to not be so afraid of what other people are going to do when I really need to be less afraid of what I need for myself. Mm, I think that's what a lot of it boils down to. But yeah, you don't have to like life doesn't have to look the way that it always has for you. You can change that. And I think a big piece of that is, is taking those pauses and starting to question why you do the things that you do, why you're in at this job you don't want to be at and that you hate or why you haven't made that, made, made that move, you know, to another country or whatever you're doing. Like, um, really just sitting with that and, and asking yourself, like, am I honoring myself or abandoning myself in this moment? And like, also what expectations do you have of yourself that are unrealistic or unreasonable? Mm -hmm. And then so when you've thought about those things for yourself, the couple of big buckets of ways that um, you can now work through this because it is hard to like have such a, um, a strong lens on yourself and to see all the things that you're doing. But having conversations in therapy, I think working with a therapist is one of the best ways to to work through abandonment issues, how that shows up for you, how you are not, um, or, or as Carly said, how you might be abandoning yourself. I think that those are things that are more easily pointed out by a professional. Um, it could maybe your friends as well, but I, I would definitely recommend that that's something to chat about with a therapist, um, along with like that self work that you can do that we're kind of talking about where it's just exploring and, and, you know, journaling and thinking about, you know, how you've moved in the past, what's, how have you always done things? How can you do things differently? Um, it's worth looking into, worth Googling, reading about abandonment, um, understanding your attachment styles, which again, we've mm -hmm. talked about that. But I just, I thought it was interesting because I didn't quite just connect it like, oh, that's a reflection of this. Um, 
but but it is and so there's so many ways that we can live a more carefree life if we let go of this fear of abandonment yeah life does not have to be heavy or arduous um and i would also recommend starting in therapy and if you're like why can't afford therapy google is great there's also a lot of um psychologists who post a lot about these things or have podcast episodes or things on them where you can start your learning until you can um once you have been in therapy some other types of things that might be helpful is like reparenting yourself, like doing some reparenting work. Cause a lot of these do stem from childhood. And so some also inner child work. Um, we talked about this with Stevon Lewis, uh, in imposter syndrome about having like evidence, uh, to challenge your negative thoughts and assumptions about yourself and negative narratives that you might have in your life. For example, I didn't get that promotion. I'm worthless. Nobody respects my work. Nobody cares about me. But if you have a little evidence folder of like, all these awards you've won of people telling you, wow, you're so good at X and we appreciate your work for Y. Wow. You're such a good leader. Like all these things. Sometimes it's helpful to discount those negative narratives in our head. Mm -hmm. And, and even with all of that though, too, because with those examples you gave about um, doing this yourself at the end of the day too, it has always been the therapist that actually like m helped me to connect the things things even about your parents because like i said your parents are always gonna have not always but for the most part you are whether it's stockholm -y or like it's literally like yeah but it's positive nothing was bad but then it still helps you like really actually break down what it, what those things were even if there weren't intentional type things um and if you're a person who you're so kind of down that you don't think of evident like you sometimes you it's hard to do those things yeah. yourself um, so definitely, even if you are, um, looking at like one session or a lot of times through your work, like they will have free, uh, resources for therapy, et cetera. I think that that's something definitely that if you can do that, it's worth investing in it because it'll, I think it'll pull everything together a little bit more quickly. Yeah. And that might be a self-sabotaging belief. If you keep telling yourself you can't, cause if you save up like a little bit here and there, like I understand life is hard, but it's not completely inaccessible and it could change your whole entire life. Mm -hmm. And then once you have that base, it's easier to do the self care and to actually talk through things like with your partner, when you have a better understanding of how these things actually show up in your life, it's like easier to work through with those people in your life. Okay. Um, so this week, let us know your thoughts on abandonment issues. Um, feel free to let us know how you feel about what your issues may be, how they stem. Um, did this trigger anything for you? Any thoughts that um, will lead you to next steps? Um, you can hit us up at Carly's Couch, Carly, Carpio, Lextopia across um, the accounts or CC Fierce. And we will check out those comments or you can leave them on the post or on the YouTube clip as yeah. well we like interacting with y'all so hit us up we do be answering um or mostly i be answering but we we be on there um oh okay do you want me to answer my, myself this first or you want me to ask you um yeah this week's question of the week is and i just got this because the group chat asked <laughs> it so they probably got off twitter or something they were talking about it and i was not participating so <laughs> um but i know they're not gonna hear this um if you had to kick three states out of the united states we're going down to 47 states mm. which three would go uh florida because they Fucking wilding, um, and always, but then we would miss out on the Florida man stories. But I'm just gonna go with them. Sorry, Miami, I'll go visit Cuba, um, Arizona, because I feel like they just a more desert, racist Oklahoma. Like, and I just there's not not to shit on people, but I, I mean, they can just go. Um, and the third one, I mm, I don't know. Those are the the two easy ones. Maybe something that in like the upper middle that I don't really know too much about. Montana looks pretty. So maybe South Dakota or North mm -hmm. Dakota. I don't know too much about them. Sorry, y'all. Y'all can get the X too. So you said Dakotas, Florida and Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, I would go with Ohio, West Virginia mm. and Hawaii. Oh, damn. Because then they could be their sovereign nation again. Yeah, that's the that. But yeah, that's fair. That's the three Sorry, that I would go go with um, if I had to kick them out of the United States. I don't see us getting much from from those two. And the other one is so far, it's like it could just be its own thing. Yeah, and also if y'all haven't, there's a really interesting story about how the U.S. like went in and colonized and stole them from their um, themselves. Very interesting. I think it's on PBS and it's free. So if you don't <laughs> anything about Hawaii, look them up. But let us know if you had to kick three states out of the U.S., which three get in the boot. 
And with that, we'll see you next week. Bye, y'all.